My friends, we are here today in the house that Bob McNair built to pay our respects to this man with a big vision for a better world. A man whose soft voice and bold actions spoke louder than words. A man whose never accept defeat attitude allowed him to only see challenges where others saw setbacks. Ladies and gentlemen, today is the 77th anniversary of the day that our country was subjected to a brutal surprise attack by the forces of evil. It is therefore fitting, I think, that we honor the memory of a man who represented everything that is good about the United States of America. Bob McNair was a gentle giant, a gentle giant who shared his successes with all of us. When Bob succeeded, we all succeeded. From bringing the NFL back to Houston to the more than $500 million that he and Janice contributed to education, to medical research, and other worthy causes. And so today we mourn the loss of a great man who followed St. Peter's advice when he said, as each has received a gift, use it to serve one another as good stewards of God's varied grace. When once asked what motivated him, Bob responded, God has been very good to me, and I want to be a good steward of what he has blessed me with. Bob McNair and I shared many interests. We both loved football. We loved politics. We loved quail hunting. One of the most important things we had in common, perhaps, was that one of our nation's finest leaders, President George Bush, converted both of us from Democrats into Republicans. And so, on this first day, after we have laid President Bush to rest, I would like, on behalf of both Bob and myself, to thank him for his friendship and his guidance to the two of us and for all that he did to make America and the world a better place. Houston has lost two of its very greatest and admired adopted sons. I only saw Bob McNair throw in the towel one time it happened many years ago during a quail hunt in some sand dunes called the Bull Pasture in South Texas. On a hot day, the drag of the sand on our legs was as exhausting to us as it was to Bob's black and white Cocker Spaniel Liberty. When the three of us were totally exhausted, Bob looked directly at me and said, calf rope. Were it not for my father, I would have had no idea what Bob meant because he was the only other person I ever heard use that phrase. Calf rope, as it turns out, is a Southern expression that means uncle or I give up. And so, mercifully, we did. But Bob didn't surrender very often. He couldn't if he wanted to rise from his modest North Carolina background. So he did what Southerners have done for generations. He and Janice packed up their family and came to Texas. He became a Houston success story, progressing from a car rental business that he had started with $700 
to developing Cogen Technologies, an energy company that he sold for one and a half billion dollars. Yes, he faced setbacks along the way, including a Chapter 11 bankruptcy at one point, but he never gave up on the American dream, the American dream that hard work, honesty, and love of country are necessary traits for success. Bob believed in these virtues, and he lived these virtues every day of his life. Without his rare combination of drive and patience, he would never have gotten an NFL franchise because it was obvious in 1997 that league owners wanted Los Angeles to have another team before Houston. During the two years that Bob negotiated with those owners, the asking price for expansion almost tripled. There were other hurdles along the way, but Bob kept his focus on the big picture. Without that persistence, Houston might have had to wait a decade or longer for a team to replace the Oilers. Yes, Bob McNair's successes were extraordinary. But he would tell you that the most important things to him in life were his faith and his family. And to witness the love within that family is an extraordinarily beautiful thing. He loved the Texans, too. The day before Bob died, son Cal went from the Texans' practice facility to the hospital. Though Bob was heavily sedated, he took his son's hand, looked at him, and said, Cal, you're doing a great job with the team, but they've got to get better in the red zone. <laughs> yes, Bob did love the Texans, and as was the case with all of his other blessings, he was a good steward of them until the day he died. And so I can imagine the scene as Bob approached the pearly gates, wearing his trademark Texans hat and that big, broad smile that warmed our hearts. St. Peter opened his arms and said, Welcome to heaven, Bob McNair. You have won the Super Bowl of life. Indeed, you did, Bob. We love you, we admire you, and we will see you on the other side.